I gotta tell you, I had no regard for these movies. Like, I I never even thought about them. They weren't even a passing thought, Logan. I I I was like ten minutes into the movie yesterday. I realized I don't even know what this is about. I turned yeah. to my girlfriend. I was like, "Is this a possessed kid movie? I don't even know." Like, not even for the podcast. Like for your life, you just like they never. You never even thought about them. Yeah, we just never crossed paths. Why? Like you've seen? I feel like this is the only James Wan thing you never saw. We yeah, saw like Death Sentence and the the puppet. No, no, no. Room. Well, eventually, Dead what Silence. happened was I liked uh, James Wan movies, and I went back and I watched all the ones I'd never seen before. I would have included Insidious in that, but I was already doing the podcast. I feel so like I you like, say that all the time for any franchise you never saw, but you just watched The Meg 2 yesterday. I feel like you don't give a shit. That's with, like, new shit. But, we the like, Insidious 4 came out, like, three years ago. But you why would care? I watch Insidious 4? i never but, seen but, the first but, three. Yeah, exactly. Well, why didn't you watch the first three? Like the catch up for Insidious Four, you don't have like a girlfriend at that point who liked movies, like horror movies. Want to watch Insidious? No, uh, to Insidious? be honest, like I never was with anyone who had any interest in Insidious until right now. Like when the Red Door was coming out, my current girlfriend wanted to. Go see finally, it. found the right one who likes Insidious. I guess so. That's I the goal. So. <laughs> <laughs> who likes Patrick as much as I do? She really does. She's very charmed by Patrick Wilson. <laughs> well, maybe that's a problem for you. You don't like Patrick Wilson, it seems. Yeah. At one point, there was a scene where Patrick Wilson was, like, being, like, very charming to Rose Byrne in bed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Dallas just, like, burst out. Like, she turned to me and she goes, like, how do you not find him charming? <laughs> wow, she was way into it. Yeah. Yeah, I know the scene. <laughs> All right, Insidious. Apparently, this came out in 2011. I had no idea. It did, ma'am. Uh, so it's James Wan and Lee Whannell, the the Saw team. Hell yeah! If it's if it's April, it must be Insidious. That's what I was um. Saying. So had had James Wan done other movies between Saw and this one? Yeah, yeah. Death Sentence, Dead Silence, right? Right. He was sort of like. I don't want to say floundering because like there's a, those movies are OK, but he was sort of like still trying to find his way. Right. And I think this was kind of where he did like he did this and the conjuring back to back. And then it's like, all right, that's who James Wan is. Well, no, he does this insidious two, insidious two and the conjuring come out the same year. That's wild. Well, what comes out first? I wonder. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, so it's Insidious, The Conjuring, Insidious Two, Furious Seven, The Conjuring Two, then Aquaman, wow. Malignant. No, what a seven. career! <laughs> and now Aquaman, the Legend of the Seventeen Seas. By the way, right, right before 18. Insidious, right before Insidious, he did uh, Doggy Heaven, <laughs> which you saw, didn't you? Yeah, of course, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A year, a year ago at this point when we did Saw. Yeah. That's a great film. Saw? Doggy Heaven. Soggy Heaven? I, I believe when we ranked we we ranked James Wan when we did Saw. And I I I I wanted to have the hot take. Insidious was my number one. So that's what I did at, the, at that time. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Um, I think I, I buy it. Really? I, I like Insidious. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I was pretty into it. That's great. Um, I I just all right. Well, we'll talk about it in a second. Okay. Uh, all right. Lee, so Lee One now, they're they're that's his like writing partner at this time. He's in the movie. Cute, cute fella. Yeah, I gotta tell you, his character though, I hated. Yeah, here's I here's what that. I hated about him. He wore glasses and his name was Specs. That's it. You loved everything else though. Come on. God, yeah. what what is this? The fucking 80s. <laughs> uh I don't want to spoil anything. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say it stuff. All right. <laughs> All right. So this it was originally called the Further. 
Okay. Um, and they changed it to Insidious. I clapped when they said the title. I was like, Yeah. They are all trying to get inside of his physical body simply because they, they crave life, the chance to live again. But there are other entities who are malevolent and have a more insidious agenda. And then there is this. A demon. It's wild to me that like the character that hangs these movies together is like the old lady from There's Something About Mary. You know who she is, right? Lynn Shay? She's the sister of Robert Shay, the New Line Cinema. Like the Lately, like the president. Oh, of I did Cinema know that because she is the teacher in Nightmare. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, that's right. Yep, that's interesting. Nepo baby, huh? Yeah, Nepo sis. So. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. So this came out April first, two thousand eleven. April Fool's Day. We were all like, "Are you kidding me? With how good this movie is?" <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> It had a budget of one point five million dollars, which blew me away when I looked it up. I gotta be honest. Like I was watching this movie and I was like, man, Juan was working with a budget in this one. No. And then I looked up one and a half million dollars. How the fuck does it look so good? He made that money go a long way. I sort of had to have a problem with the color grading of this movie. Yeah, that's fine. But I just mean like the It kind of gives me a headache, honestly. Like it like What? <laughs> like like when I was thinking about watching this movie again, I was like, now like that's kind of a deterrent for me. Is that like I'm gonna have to sit through the like weird gray <laughs> color grading. I don't like it. I think Peter that only is, happens in the further. Movie. No, 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 no. This it's throughout the entire movie. Like we'll just be in that house and it's just like oh, what am I watching? Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince? I that shit didn't like... bother me at all. And I think it works because it never did until this time. The movie works with red a lot. And so it makes the splashes of red stand out more. Green. When that red door showed up, I was like, I know that's significant. <laughs> I, yeah, I thought when I saw it too, I was like, they know that's all he knows. He's going to love the red door. <laughs> yeah, man. In that little picture that the kid drew. Well, and. Oh, I guess you didn't see it. There was, was a real red door, not just in the photo. I mean, later on there was. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. This. But that, that's why I love these guys. <laughs> we we talked about it when we talked about Saw. But the reason I love these guys so much is that they, these guys aren't Nepo babies. And these guys used to work with low budgets. These guys are just like all creativity. Yeah, no, I love that about them. Yeah, I'll always love James Wan so much. And Lee Wano. Uh This movie made $100.1 million on that $1.5 million That's a lot budget. Of yeah. Came in at number 64. For... By the way, we have to talk about Blumhouse. This was like one of the first, or like aside from like Paranormal Activity, this was one of the first like big Blumhouse launchers, I feel like. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this was, was a like big this, deal for Blumhouse. This was even like before Sinister. This was it was like this and Sinister were like the big like oh these 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 are like big yeah. Movies. Did you know that the um the Patrick Wilson part in this was originally offered to Ethan Hawke? He turned it down. No, but that would have been great. That, he would have yeah. been awesome. He said he regretted turning it down. That's part of the reason he signed he up for Sinister. He would have just directed the his first movie if he had been the Patrick Wilson character yeah you could be right yeah that's a shame can you imagine ethan hawks <laughs> the red door <laughs> oh my god but but then would you think he would have cast him in the conjuring then as well yeah i mean i don't know i don't know it's interesting directors have people they like directors have people they don't like you know i read that ashley just auditioned for final destination five again Yes, they were almost in three. She, I said, she's that was she auditioned for two, three, and five. Didn't get the roles in any of them. How embarrassing is it that we know that? Yeah, well, I wouldn't say I would say that's a cool fact. Now that I know, that's Mm -hmm. awesome. Anyway, maybe it's uh, her final destination to get one. Like eventually, it'll come around and she will get the role for the sixth movie. 
Well, now be. she's old. <laughs> What's she doing in Final Destination movie? She can play she, she can a be teacher. The, she can be the mom that's like sending the, her kid. Like at the start of the second movie, the dad that's like, "Have fun with your, with your friends." She can be that <laughs> character. Okay, that'd be cool. Um, th- this uh, it came at number sixty four at the box office for the year between New Year's Eve and Medea's Big Happy Family. New Year's right. Eve. That's like Valentine's Day. That's like that movie. Yeah. Gary Marshall. Gary. No, they're not they're they're not really connected. Okay. We should do we uh, should have covered that when you did like ha- Halloween. You, you know, all the all the holidays is a franchise. There's a new Thanksgiving, you know that? Yeah, well it's based it's like on, the, movie. on the grindhouse thing. Oh, that's cool. We if should, we should watch... say those are franchises though, every holiday movie. Independence Day. <laughs> That's a stretch. <laughs> okay. The uh it nominated for one Saturn Award, Logan. Saturn is between Uranus, between Uranus and Neptune. Saturn World Sci-Fi Blessed with Films. Not best horror movie, which surprised me. Insidious. Seems like that would be a shoo in. Mm-hmm. But no. They they by that time it was horror slash thriller and and they gave it to a thriller that year. It was the girl with the dragon to two, but um, Lynn Shay was nominated for best supporting actress. Okay, All right, and she lost to Emily Blunt for the Adjustment Bureau. Yeah, Bureau. Yeah. Well, I I my assumption is that. Fifty percent of the audience heard me say the assumption, the adjustment bureau just now, and they're like, "Oh, right, that movie. Forgot that existed." Well, they heard you say the adjustment bureau, and they were like, right, the "They did, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> and then the other half of the audience is like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> well, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, everyone's heard of it. I, I'm sure there are people that saw that movie in theaters and just barely remember that it exists right I, w- I would guess emily blunt might be better than lynn shea though that might be fair okay we'll allow it let's talk about the movie logan yes how does it start it starts i forgot how it starts we're a happy family right we just moved into a house that's how these start yeah <laughs> There's a great title card. I love the title. Oh, yes. Both title cards are great. Yes. Great, scary music. Yeah, the score is really good. Yeah. I feel like music does a lot of heavy lifting in this movie. Yeah, a lot of a lot of violin stings and piano, like... You know? Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. That was accurate, right? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Um so who you got in this family? It's uh Patrick Wilson. He's the patriarch. Right. And then so you know what he does for he's a teacher. He's a teacher. He's, yeah, we see him at work. On the blackboard behind him is a chalk drawing of Jigsaw. Yeah, I call him Billy the Puppet, but others call him Jigsaw. Yeah. <laughs> and did you, and did you yeah, notice there was o- a... We only call him Jigsaw because there's a movie about him called Jigsaw. They were hinting at that. Did you notice there's an eight implying the eight Saw movie soon to come out? Look out, folks. Look out for that eight Saw movie. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. This was a big thing at the time. That eight. We were, we were all so excited. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, but then uh, he didn't even have anything to do with it. The eighth movie was, of course, Jigsaw, yeah. And that yeah. was the worst one. And what's we're, this we're over so here? Pop. What's this over here, Logan, in the corner? What's that? James Wan's been a naughty boy. What happened? You didn't notice this? What there's a There's a list of people going to detention today. Oh, I, oh I've, I've heard of this. No, I never noticed this. What is it? It's yeah. like, who is it? James Wan. Oh, it's his name. Says James there? Wan. On the oh, board. I thought he was like doing some uh, some fun stuff with like the crew or something. No, no, the, all the other names are crew members, but it's also That'd just his good. name. That's fun. Great job, James. Yeah, very fun. Um, 
And she she's a musician. She right. plays the piano and sings what it. but what for what? Yeah, I, I don't know. She I don't know. She never I really goes tell anywhere. Whether this was a commercial performs. position or like I it got I I had the sense that she was like trying to put together a demo. Yeah, well, I thought it, I thought it seemed like she had just had a baby and was like getting back on her feet, but they don't have any babies. It's like they have the two like eight year olds or whatever. So yeah, I had questions about her career, but I don't know. She's a maybe a struggling musician. I don't know. I love Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne's a great actress, and I think she does a good American accent, but she's got like Australian face. <laughs> That's fair. You know what I mean? Like she just yeah. looks Australian to me. Yeah, no, I agree with that. All right. And then you got the there's a bunch of kids going on in this family. Like Rachel Vice doesn't look American to me. Yeah, that's actually Any a good example she of plays it. Yeah. American, I don't buy it. Yeah. No matter how good she is. Yeah. Uh I feel that way about uh Dan Stevens. Dan Stevens. I just watched the guest uh last night. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You that what'd you think of it? I liked it a lot. I didn't log it. I didn't really know what to say, so I didn't log it yet. But I yeah. really liked it. Probably give it a four. So you gave it a five. I did. I mean, like in hindsight, maybe it's a four. But I remember after it, I was like, "What can I say that I didn't like about it?" Yeah, you <laughs> just you just said it was like a premise that they just like elevated to the best way that they could, which yeah, I couldn't disagree with. Yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah. Um. Anyway, let's keep Emily Blunt. She's another one. Yeah, Emily Blunt. Okay. The Adjustment Bureau said Emily <laughs> Blunt. <laughs> uh, all right. What, what, oh, so Rose Byrne, our, our beautiful songwriter. Right. And, 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 and the kids. So this is how they set up the kids. We meet one of them. By the way, can bring up, let's bring up the kids because Ty Simpkins. I, wait, no, he, I am talking about the kids. Come on. Wait, but, but he... I never knew this until I watched Little Children. He plays Patrick Wilson's son in Little Children. Yeah. I that know. blew my mind when I saw that movie. That, that's Wilson my review. That's all I could say about might it. Might as well raise this kid. <laughs> he, he basically Like, did. Patrick Wilson should give this kid away at his wedding. Because they're in the new movie together, too. Like, they're back. He's been with this kid for 20 yeah, years. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I love it. I love it, too. But uh, yeah, so we first meet Ty Simpkins, and he's a cute little kid, isn't he? Cute little kid, Dalton. Very cute. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's on the poster, just right, just right. That's that's Dalton. He's our main character. He's the one I thought was going to get possessed. He sort of does, but not really. Um, then we're told there's a baby, right? We hear the baby cry. Better. Oh yeah, there it. is a baby. I'm so stupid. I brought up that there's not even a baby. When when did you say that? I said, because I, I was like, it's. it seems like she's like trying to get back on her feet after having a baby, but there's not even a baby. Oh, there is right. obviously a baby. There is a baby. The whole thing is the fucking baby monitor, which is one of the scariest parts of the movie. I don't even, oh, what my am I God. I about? love that part. Somebody earlier was probably just like, they probably turned off the podcast. They were like, this fucking moron. <laughs> there's no I, baby. I certainly would have. That part is so scary, though. Get it. Get it. I want it. I want it. Now! It is so good. It is so good. Dude, that part and the part where the, the you see the guy walking by the window. Oh, and then yeah. all of a sudden he says, oh, my God. There were like a few times this movie where like I like it's not it wasn't like a jump scare. Like I didn't like the exorcist believer made me jump scare once or twice. This movie, it was more just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's a reason James Wan is a fucking billionaire. <laughs> he he, ta he tapped into like what really gets people going. He knows, especially yeah. at a time when we needed it the most. It's true. He does in really unique ways. Like you could go ahead and compare this movie to things like the pol like the Poltergeist, <laughs> all you want. But like it does have like its own thing that, and 
I even thought like with Patrick Wilson, it would feel too much like the conjuring or something. And every so often it does mostly when James Wan is like, look how cool I can shoot the interior of this house. Yeah. That's very but, similar house. There's a lot of handheld stuff like the conjuring, a lot of zooms like he does in the conjuring, like especially when it's like when the one brother is like, I don't like being with my other brother and they separate rooms and you get just like zooms and you're just like, Oh, this yeah. is just flat out yeah. the conjuring right now. Right. But, yeah. But, uh, but on the other hand, like it has different shit to say, and it's you know a very unique little film. I it's about astral projecting. We haven't really seen that before much. I I might like this more than The Conjuring. That's awesome. I really didn't expect that. Yeah, yeah. um, yeah, astral projection. I thought they should have got gotten Doctor Strange in on it, man. Yes, he do a lot of that. Yeah, Stephen Strange. He's a big fan of that astral projection stuff. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what are we talking about next? Oh, so, more, oh, oh, wait, wait. Let me finish setting up the kids. So right. then you hear the baby crying. They go upstairs. Like it's like, oh, all right, this is a baby, cute baby, right? I don't even remember what it looked like. No, very cute. Yeah. Very cute. Ty Simpkins, the baby, I'm settling in. All right, it's two kids, both. And the the very other kid, adorable. too. All right, then it cuts to the breakfast table. There's this other kid sitting there. <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> I, I I thought it was like Ty Simpkins had like a friend from school over or something. But uh, evidently, he's part of the family, too. His name's Foster. Foster, a terrible name. Yeah, I would uh, if I was on the playground with a kid named Foster, I'd call him fucking bananas. Um, you and call uh, him bananas. Yeah, like bananas, Foster. Oh, I don't get that. I only know Johnny Bananas, obviously. Well, of course. Um, and yeah, kid was in so the hangover. I, was he? I just sort of felt bad for this kid. I was like, dude, you're I you got middle child syndrome to the T. You are clearly the least interest interesting person in this family and the least important member of this. Haven't family. you seen that episode of Full House where Stephanie is like, I'm the middle child. This sucks. I DJ, you guys love her and you like respect her, but Michelle, you think she's so cute. And they tell Stephanie, they sit her down and they say, Stephanie. What's the best part of a bologna sandwich? Not the bread, the bologna. What's the best part of an Oreo? Not the crunchy cookie part, but the middle, the yeah, stuffing part. I mean, if I'm stuffing, I'm like, that's a cute idea, but it's also bullshit. No, come on. they probably tell Foster the same thing. <laughs> they say, Foster, you love bologna sandwiches for the bologna, not the, the bread. <laughs> come on. I like Foster. That's so funny. Um, no, Foster is the, uh, might be the LVP. That's fair. Although I did like the part where he's like, can I move rooms? I don't like when he gets up and walks around at night. I'm That's like, so Why? scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great moment. It is great. Um, what are the, yeah, the scariest moments in the movie are like that. The thing with the baby monitor um, when she she sees the little kid jump roping through the window, and when that like beardo guy is playing with the viewfinder, <laughs> he sees those two women. I'm like, ah! <laughs> well, you you missed one when when she it's it's like I don't think it's the quite the the baby monitor part, but it's like when she it might be when she goes up and there's just a person that's there behind the curtain that you can see like outside the window. That part was always so scary. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. that is scary. And then Pat, she's like Patrick Wilson, go check. Like there's somebody here, and he's like, "What are you talking about? You're full of this shit." And then they hear the the alarm. And then he goes down the stairs and the door's open. Ah! <laughs> James Wan is good at he does this in Saw where um there's a there's a part in Saw where it's Carrie always at home. It's showing like some scenes at home and he has the daughter that like he neglects his family a lot. And he has the daughter that's like somebody's in my room. And they go in at one point and there's a man standing there with a sheet on him. And it's like when he like when he's there like 
grabbing her family and you don't you don't expect anything like that in that type of movie like you expect them to open the door and there's nothing there but james wan is good at like something really is there like you like you you open the door and you expect nothing but really something is there and it's like the scariest thing imaginable he, he's really smart i have a hot take james wan pretty smart guy yeah. but um yeah he's just so good but you sort of like skipped over the part when when it's so good it's one of the scariest moments of the last 15 years no oh, shit when she goes outside to like take the garbage out it's the middle of the day and she looks inside from outside and like this that fucking scary music starts playing right yeah and there's just that little boy in her her house running around that, because it's the middle of the day. Like, yeah, no yeah. That. And it's then so she scary. goes in, and there's nothing there. And she and she goes up to the bedroom, and he just like jumps out. Like, oh, ah! <laughs> I hate it. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, that that whole that whole sequence where she's like home alone is is great. Uh, what about the part? Everyone says this is like one of the best jump scares of the last since this movie has come out. The part where. The m- mom, not Rose Byrne, but Patrick Wilson's mom is telling the Barbara Patrick... Hershey, by the way. Yeah, I don't really know her, but I knew she was like, she's, a, she's she must great. Be famous. Yeah, I was like, she better stay away from these these insidious entities or else she's going to get all entity. That's oh. a movie she was in from the 80s where she was raped by a ghost or oh. a demon or something. Uh, anyway, is that, is that what they're spoofing in Scary Movie 2? Uh, I think it might be, yeah. Anyway, do the ghost, but anyway, Barbara Hershey, yeah, she's fucking oh, yeah, she... boxcar Bertha. That's really that's like, yeah, I, mean, I almost watched that movie. She's like, the titular boxcar Bertha. That's awesome. And then she had like a big eighties. She's in Hannah and her sisters and Last Temptation of Christ. She's great, and you know she's been in a lot of stuff. She's had a long ass career, and um. She's still working. I mean, she was in uh, Black Swan. Who is she? The mom? She played like... Uh, like Natalie Portman's yeah, mom? Yeah. No, no, no. I think she was the mom. Yeah. That's awesome. The... But the, that 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 scene where where she's talking to she's like telling Patrick Wilson like that he used to astral project or whatever, and she and you get that scary red faced demon right behind him. You like that yeah. part? That jump scare? Yeah, it was okay. I, I, that one didn't. I didn't jump. Really, everybody says that's like the best part of this movie. I, I disagree. disagree personally, but people people love that part. I love that part too. But um, I just thought, like, I couldn't stop thinking about Darth Maul. He looks so much like obviously. Darth Maul. Everybody's made that joke, yeah. And and, and I didn't Maul. know that. I'd never heard that joke before. And then I made it to my girlfriend. She was like, "Everybody's made that joke." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how original. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Darth Maul demon. Yeah, but um, so what? But, what we didn't bring up the I other love, guy, but that that brought I thought was so interesting. Like there were so many interesting elements to this movie, where like. All, when he first met Lin Shay and she was like, I'm, you know, nice to see you again. I was like, what's that? Right. I was like so intrigued. Like, it's such a good script. Like, Lee Wanell. This, this is Lee Wanell's best script. You think so? Yeah. What about what about The Invisible Man? That's a great that was, one. Yeah, that's good. Upgrade. He's made some good movies. I didn't know if he were, even wrote that or not, but... um. I would assume he's yeah, but, but yeah, this just has so many ideas. Like, like we're just off at a certain point. Like, we just take off, and it's like we have so much yeah. crazy shit happening. You're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, like it's from awesome. from outside when they announced like Insidious two, and then all of a sudden like it's 2023 and there are five Insidious movies. That seemed insane to me, and it is kind. Then of. watching the movie. I'm like, it really opens up a lot of doors that you could go into, like story wise. Red doors. Like sometimes. for the first time, like I watching this, I was like, yeah, you could get five movies out of this. Yeah, def- definitely. Um, the so they yeah they, they astral project and they go they go into the further. Do you like the further? 
Uh, not my favorite part of the movie, to be honest. Like, yeah, everybody's take has always been like that they love the first like eighty percent of the movie, and then like once they go into the further for the last however long, they don't love it as much. I'm still into it, but I I, I can see their point. It goes on a little long. Really fun directing, I noticed this time. Like, no, it, for it, sure. It's, it's I love so the way inventive. it looks. I love how much fog there is. So much fog. So it's like so many so like much reds fun. and greens and crazy colors. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Remi- and and then the room where he finds his son finally and like the demon. She, the son's like, he's watching. And he turns around. He's <laughs> so funny looking at them. though. Um, I, With his like tongue stuck out. Yeah. Yeah. But I love that. Like the set design of that room. It reminded me of Hellraiser. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I I haven't seen Hellraiser, but I you know what what I like this time. I, I I think you talked about it, those women that were like in the cameras. I really like those like the camera that he had that took the photos. That was really cool. Like the the the, the way they filmed that was cool with like the the color well, and like because the... they used a the viewfinder. Like ultimately, like if you think about it too hard, it makes no sense that 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 would be a thing and helpful or work in any way. But it's for the shot, and the shot is so well designed that you don't care that it's. Oh like... uh, yeah, I didn't care. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Um, but yeah, what what about the ending? They they go in, he comes out, he saves him, and do you think everything was a success, right? Yeah. But then, uh, I don't know what she's doing, but she t- she takes a photo of him, and that really pisses him off. Uh, because he's not himself, because he actually got possessed by that crazy demon lady. Um, and he kills Elise. That's okay, uh... but I have a lot to talk about. And then, I, you know what I like that I, f- I forgot about the very end of the movie, when it's like when Rose Byrne turns around and she's like, oh, no, <laughs> and then it, and oh, it yeah. like, fades away. I don't, I don't like that. It's okay. It's okay. But um, I... I have questions about this. So Patrick Wilson, he when he was a kid, he saw a demon or whatever called, I mean, it's like a lady, like an old lady, right? Yeah. What What's her name? You're going to say call. I don't know what she's called. I, I don't think she's called anything. Pazuzu. <laughs> and... He goes through this. He like astral projects away and Elise comes in and like helps him out and gets him away from this old lady. Now he's an adult. He doesn't remember any of that. His kid astral projects away. Okay. He goes and astral projects again, saves the kid. All right. Now he comes back. She takes a picture of him at, and he's the old lady. Right. Okay. Has he been the old lady his entire life? No, I think going in this time like got him too close and she was able to possess him basically was the thing. Like when they're yelling it in the mirror. Like like when he goes into the further this time she was able to get him kind of deal. That's what I always took it as. But what's the deal with how he hates having pictures taken of him the whole movie? He hated that the whole movie? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, maybe you might be right. He's been trying to conceal that the entire movie. Because early on when she... When she brings up the fact that Dalton's astral traveling and he, he has, like, looks on his face, I always took that as, like... As he's uncomfortable because he all used to also do that, but maybe he's doing that because like that's a thing. Uh, uh oh, I don't want, want this to open doors and have them know they... I'm the old lady. Right. I never really thought about that. Yeah, I thought she was able. She possessed him toward the end. Listen, I talked to my girlfriend who's a fan of this franchise last night, and she was very insistent that I'm wrong about this. Really? Okay. Yeah. That that. Maybe she knows something that I don't. That it's what you said, and he goes into the further to get his kid, and that's when she gets him. Okay? Right. But, like, I've got questions. Well, if she's very insistent, then she must know something that I'm forgetting, maybe. Or maybe she just uh, wants to be right so bad that she's insistent. I'm I'm not really sure what it is. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. But as, as it stands, I'm fucking pumped as fuck. I, I love I, I love when you when you get like you're you hang on to maybe the wrong thing. You're like the robe. <laughs> robe is gonna be so important. And, yeah. and then when it's not that, you get kind of disappointed. Don't think about that maybe too much because I'm not sure it matters. I'll try not to. I'll try. Not to. Because this well, no, one raises I was so like, many questions. You know? I was totally yeah. into the movie like before that twist happened. Like I would have been happy with this movie if it was just a happy ending. Right. So, like, I'm fine, but I'm very intrigued by this. <laughs> okay. Well, um, if next movie doesn't answer your questions, I don't want you to get upset. But I, it, it, it probably does. The, the next movie, a lot of lot of crazy stuff happens in the next movie. But I'm very well, excited. I know by the way, next it's... week we're going to see a sequel and a prequel. A sequel and a prequel. Okay, right, yeah. Yeah, I know that two is a prequel to one. And then three and four, wait, no, no, two, <laughs> two is a sequel to one, three and four are prequels, and then five is a sequel to two. I think, yes, I, th- I think what it is, is three is a prequel to one and two, and then I think four might be a prequel to three also. It's not like a sequel to three, I think it's oh, a prequel to all of them, maybe. Or maybe there are elements that are a prequel, but then other elements that are a sequel. I don't remember. The, the some stuff <laughs> happens like way in the past. I remember in in the fourth movie, and I never saw the fifth one. Is like that dinosaur times? Yet? Yeah, we go to sixty five million years in the past. <laughs> that would be um, great. Where? Like in the Meg too. That's in the, <laughs> that's like dinosaur times. It, it, it opens in dinosaur times. Oh my god, that's awesome. Uh, you know what you should watch the open. <laughs> you shouldn't watch this, but the opening of Jurassic World Dominion. It's like the extended edition has like a long segment where it's just dinosaurs, and it's pretty cool. In Jurassic World Dominion, like the extended edition. When when, when oh. we had to cover that, I watched the extended edition for a long time, and I didn't know. But in the ex- in the version I watched, we get like a big dinosaur part at the beginning. That was probably the best part of the movie. I well, I'll tell you what. I love the dinosaur part in 2011's The Tree of Life. It's probably the best part of that movie. Yeah, I I never saw it. Sadly. Yeah. Um, Insidious: The Red Door is streamable. Where? Peacock. Yeah, you know, it's everywhere for six bucks. Oh, so so, okay, so not really. Like it's <laughs> streamable, I guess, but it's not like readily available. You gotta right, like whatever. Rentable. Um, yeah, but maybe in two weeks it'll it'll be there. Um, all right, I'm gonna give it a four. My MVP is gonna be Rose Byrne. My maybe James Wan. You don't you don't really like that? I'll go Rose yeah. Byrne. And my LVP, I guess I'll go the other Foster. Bananas Foster, right? Johnny Bananas Foster. <laughs> all right, Insidious. I give it a four. Love it. My MVP. I'll go with burn. Mm-hmm. I felt the burn. Burn. And my burn. LVP. Who'd you go with? Foster. Foster. Right. Yeah. Well, that's you didn't talk about Angus Sampson, who plays the other ghost hunter guy. Not yeah, Spex, he... but the other guy. <laughs> he felt Tucker. pretty whatever, but you know, it's weird. Like I recognized him and I looked up from what, and it was uh season two of Fargo, and I was and that's the same season Patrick Wilson was on. But like, <laughs> someone on season two of Fargo is really into insidious. Yeah, seems like it. Well, those shows are they have supernatural elements, don't they, Fargo? Yeah, even subtly, yeah. Okay, they don't go into the further or anything. No, nothing like that. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, but I'll tell you my LVP. I'm yeah. watching this movie. I'm like, what's this monologue? Like, at one point we see a nurse, <laughs> and she's like talking to Rose Byrne and like giving her advice and going like, "These like you're strong as hell." 
Mm-hmm. They messed with the wrong chick, they say. They're, yeah, yeah. And I was like, who the fuck is this character? Because there's like only a couple speaking roles in this movie. It's like the family and the ghost hunters or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought that was so odd. And uh, and and so anytime, you know, a, a random cute girl appears in a movie, I'm like, well, what the fuck is she doing here? All right. She's standing out to me. I looked her up. Got the answer I wanted. Lee Wanell's wife. Wow. Yeah, I thought that's where you were probably going. That's crazy because you saw Malignant, right? Yeah. James Wan's wife is in that movie. I thought you were going to say it was probably James Wan's girlfriend here that was in this one. Oh, but, no, no. So they they, like, they do that. Probably saves them money. Which is sort of surprising. I kind of, t- to be honest, though, is assumed Lee Wan was gay. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, but no. Married to this nurse. He talks about he talks about in Saw, his Adam, he talks about having a 15-hooker gangbang. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like something a gay man <laughs> would write a straight character to say. Come on, we all, we I, I love fifteen hooker game. <laughs> Who I'm doesn't? having one after right after but, you. Hang up. We don't brag about them. <laughs> oh man, I, I never thought about it. I guess. Yeah. Um. All right, so that's Insidious, right? Writer gives it a three. Henry wow. Henry gave it a four. Andy never saw it, I guess, or hasn't rated it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. No oh, more the exciting. Patreon. Patreon. Oh yeah, reads from the Patreon. I will do that. Tim says this is about this is about uh Final Destination. I almost called it Scary Movie Five. Steven Soderbergh logged in Cities. What did he say? Or he just logged it? He just logs movies. Does he? Did he rate it, or he just said like I saw this movie? Just logs it. Just I watched Insidious. All right. Tim says the only better end would be if we saw John Kramer running up to the gate of the airport and just misses the flight. That would be a great ending. Of what? He didn't get on flight 180. Like he was almost on it, but his life was spared. Oh! He, he and then he went on to make all those traps. <laughs> would have been a great ending. Kyle P. Dot, he says, I didn't get that final destination was an airplane pun until last year. Also, Logan mentioned The Office in his review. The star of Final Destination 5, of course, played Hunter on that show and was obviously <laughs> great in the cheerleading classic Fired Up. Fired Up as well, <laughs> sorry. I forget that. Fired Up, the exclamation point threw me off. I guess you know, my question is, how do you spell Fired Up? P. Dot, that would be F U. <laughs> That's how you spell Fired Up. Very F-U. good. I'm glad he set you up for that one. <laughs> um, I I want to say that I didn't know that Final Destination was an airplane pun until I saw P Dot's comment. <laughs> I think do they not uh say it in the for in the first movie or is there not like a I think there's like a thing on the ticket that says like Final Destination something and 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 it, so if you see that you'll you'll put it the two and two together but um <laughs> that's really funny. Uh, Mikey Graff says. Uh, the best part of Final Destination 5 is obviously the ending, not according to the D-Train. He says, I liked that the big accident of the It's movie... funny. I was like complaining about the ending. And then while I was complaining about the ending, I got that notification that Mikey had that comment. And I was like, God damn it. People love this ending. Eric, you're just, uh, you just hate fun, I think is what it is. I guess so. Everyone else loves it. I liked that the big accident wasn't a big vehicle crash for once. The two main guys looked too much alike. I got them confused a couple times. I I don't have that problem with this movie with those two. Did you? Because I think one um, just like looks like Tom Cruise and the other guy I know. I guess. I think yeah. I I get being confused by it, but I knew the one kid, so I didn't have a problem. Yeah, I I could probably get it though. And the chase inside the kitchen was great. Yeah. Jurassic Park vibes. He says, I'd watch more movies in this franchise. They should do a Lincoln or a Kennedy movie, or maybe the bubonic plague was death <laughs> tying up some loose ends. So many possibilities. Yeah. I can't they wait. should. Yeah. 
maybe COVID was death. I said that. You hated it. You said that nobody would want to watch that movie. No one wants to watch a COVID Final Destination movie, but I like the idea of just like in passing mentioning like COVID was a plot of death to like catch up on his work. Death, you mean Bloodworth? Is is Tony yeah. Todd coming back? <laughs> oh, you'd have to bring Tony Todd back, I think. I think so too. It's crazy how I thought he was like He's only in like three of them, and he's barely in them. He's in them for like, and he's one, in like scene. one scene per movie. Yeah, I think he's actually in this one the most. He has like two scenes in in this one. Yeah, this one and two. Right. Yes. Yeah, it's two. That's when he rips off the nipple ring. That's a that's a great part. <laughs> um. Okay. Great job, guys. Great job, guys. <laughs> You stuck you stuck through it. Uh tomorrow, yeah. if you if you guys care, tomorrow D Train and I we're gonna get together after we do we're doing another we did Hubie Halloween with Tim and tomorrow we're gonna do Spy Kids with Tim. They made a new one, sadly. We do Hubie Halloween every year. There's it's our annual Hubie Halloween episode on the Patreon. Yes. And and tomorrow Tim's coming back to do Spy Kids. But after Spy Kids, we Daniel Spy Kids are again in the new Spy Kids movie. Did you know there's a new Spy Kids movie? I didn't. Yeah. Um, we're, we are going to do a tier list of every Final Destination death, and I'm going to make a video, and I'm going to put it up. Go to YouTube, the franchise.com. I don't know what you call it, but go to the franchise on YouTube and watch that video. It's not going to be out yet, but in a few days it will be. But if you want to watch another video... If you want to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, <laughs> go to that same YouTube channel. And yeah, it's got how to solve 15 Rubik's Cube. views, baby. Hell yeah. Could be 16. <laughs> you could be the next viewer. <laughs> um, I don't know. What, what, what do we do next week? Insidious <laughs> Chapter 2 and Insidious Chapter 3. I think it's what they're called. It's not the last key. No, I that's guess that's the fourth, the fourth one. one. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's Chapter 2 and Chapter 3. Um, chapter three the, has a mm. very scary part in it. James Wan's back for two. I think three is written and directed by Lee Winnell. Is that right? I that's right. That's his first movie he ever directed. Yeah. So looking forward to to both those. Really into this franchise more than I thought I'd be. Stop yeah. letting me pick franchises. I was wrong about Transformers and Final Destination. You pick this one. I'm fucking into it. Well, uh, Final Destination, I'm pretty sure is I've always wanted to do. No, I know it was fun. Uh, but uh, but hell yeah, Insidious. I'm I'm a fan. Great. Um, what else? Anything? Uh, nothing. Be careful out there, guys. It's the spookiest month of the year. You could be walking down a hallway, all of a sudden you feel some slime on your you shoulder. Love the slime. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? You could be walking around at night trying to cross a bridge. All of a sudden, a ghoul stops you, asks you to complete some trivia. It's not a troll. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's a troll. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of spooky stuff out there. You could be walking around and, uh, you know, and, and uh, what's that? You walk through, well, oh, a cobweb. That's scary. Yeah, it's so scary. <laughs> you don't even know if you got a spider on you for the rest of the it's day. True. You're constantly thinking about it, just trying to pull little ropes off you. <laughs>